Hello everyone and welcome to Mountain Lake Journal. I'm Tom Halley. This week, the push by New York to get high-speed internet to every corner of the state. Thank you all for joining us here today for what you're going to find out is a very historic occasion uh, in North Country history. Governor Andrew Cuomo made his first ever trip to Clinton Community College this week to tout the third round of the state's investment in expanding broadband. 300 million statewide with more than a third of that, 100 million, targeted to help close the remaining broadband gap in the Adirondack Park and Northern Tier within a year. When we started this program just a few years ago, 20% of the North Country had internet access. 20% had internet access. Round one, it went to 80%. Round two, it went to 86%. Now with round three, 100% internet access for the North Country. The governor says being connected to the internet uh, is no longer a luxury, but a necessity. And that broadband is as vital to communities as water and electricity, especially for economic for development. This is the first state in the United States of America to have 100% internet access for the entire state. And I think that's going to be an incentive for companies uh, all across the world to come to New York. The funds are a mix of state, private, and federal investments with multiple providers bidding to install lines. This money for the broadband, this gets us in the end zone. And broadband and cell coverage is not something that's just nice to have. It's something that is essential for health, for safety, and for our economy. And we will never have any growth in the North Country if we don't have cell coverage and broadband. About 95% of businesses surveyed by the Chamber of Commerce say expanding and improving broadband is a top priority. With the Wall Street boom and national economy humming along, this year's survey of nearly 4,000 businesses across the northern tier found most are anticipating business remaining steady or going up in 2018. All that's happening at Plattsburgh International Airport, including the $38 million in investment, the completion of the terminal and other positive news out there, Norse Titanium moving forward, the continued strength of our Canadian connection, which is, which is driving unexpectedly high sales tax receipts, for example, in Clinton County and elsewhere, uh, dropping unemployment rates, uh, which uh, came down uh, at the end of last year to 4.6%, uh, with the federal uh, law defining full employment at 4%. Uh, that has to be a factor. Uh, the $10 million investment in downtown Plattsburgh, all of these things, I think, are feeding uh, the sense that it is right to feel optimistic. This year's survey was up several points over last year. It's a great indicator that the business community is feeling good. We see that on the ground uh, in everything from sales tax receipts to um, uh, job hirings and employers chasing for more employees. Almost every manufacturer in the area is looking for additional people. 150 of Bombardier hirings at Schluter Systems, really basically almost every manufacturer in the area, Wabtec and others. Um, so the indicators are out there, um, and uh, they actually are even a little higher and a little stronger than they were last year, which is gratifying. If there's one thing that does worry business leaders, it's anything that would disrupt trade relations between New York and its largest trading partner, Canada. And many have been keeping a close eye on the NAFTA talks. The latest round was held this week just across the border in Montreal, where after nearly giving up on the talks late last year, negotiators say over the weekend they did make at least some progress on key issues. We finally began to discuss some of the core issues. So this round was a step forward. I am hopeful progress will accelerate soon. We'll work very hard between now and the beginning of the next round, and we hope for major breakthroughs during that period. We made some progress in this round. Uh, we succeeded in together addressing some of the core issues, and there is still a significant gap on a number of issues. And we are going to be working extremely hard, extremely energetically, 
with our two partners to try to close those gaps. And while many believe NAFTA needs to be updated, they worry about any changes that could impact current trade between New York and Canada. We have some reasons to be concerned on that front. Uh, we know that there's, a, there's an anti-trade kind of atmosphere out there in both parties. Uh, we saw almost an evaporation of a general consensus about world trade during the campaign last year. Um, and uh, the, in, in some ways, we hope that the discussions, particularly with Canada, might be an opportunity to kind of reverse that because it is the gold standard of how trade can work. Uh, and can integrate economies so that we're making things together and not sending boxes back and forth. I think we generally have faith that at the end of the day, it's too good to throw away, that it'll be okay in the end, but we're gonna have concerns and bumps and turns between now and the conclusion of the talks. Former North Country Congressman Bill Owens is now a trade consultant and weighs in on the NAFTA talks and the impact major changes to the treaty could have on trade between the U.S. and Canada. You'll find his latest interview here on Mountain Lake Journal on our website. And while he was here in the North Country this week, the governor also toured some of the flood damage in the city of Plattsburgh. 70 homes were evacuated after an ice jam in the Saranac River flooded the Underwood Estates Mobile Home Park a couple weeks ago. You'll see a lot of X's on windows right now. These are homes that can't be occupied yet. The governor says he wants the state to provide up to $7 million to repair and replace the damaged homes. Each could get up to $100,000. The governor is also promising to help cover the cost of temporary housing for displaced residents for the next three months. Only about two dozen homeowners have been able to return so far. Many others have significant water damage and mold. And the governor says the State Department of Environmental Conservation will rebuild a berm near the river to protect these homes from flooding in the future. Now that the governor's gotten involved, I think these people will get a little bit of relief. Uh, I think we'll get assistance that they need. Uh, homes will either be remodeled or uh, maybe new units will come in. You know, but, uh, I think it's a, a, a blessing that, uh, you know, we have the response that we got today. Later, at his broadband announcement at Clinton Community College, the governor talked about the need to help. The homes are not now eligible for any recovery by the state. And they're not eligible for federal recovery. And these 70 residences need help. So I don't care that it doesn't fit into a state program. I don't care that it doesn't fit in to a federal program, we're going to reimburse people for their losses. The state legislature still needs to okay the $7 million fund to fix or replace the homes. The other parts of Cuomo's plan for rental assistance and work reconstructing the berm are already getting underway.